How is it going guys? Alexander again with High Winds EDC and today I got a knife review for you. Uh, but before we get to that, a uh, little bit of a pocket dump. Got the Spydeco Shaman. Again, that's gonna be my 30 day carry. Uh, in the Leatherman sheath, I got the Leatherman Free P2 today. Uh, Cause usually I have a secondary, but today I'm just carrying this as my secondary. Uh, it's not a great knife blade, but it gets the job done, cutting up sod, cutting up pallets and stuff like that, the saran wrap on a pallet. Uh, I got my work keys hooked to my belt. I'm not gonna take those out cause it's just a hassle. Then I got, you know, bandana, uh, cotton, 100%. Got my uh, uh, Olight Warrior Mini 2. Love this flashlight. I'm really, really enjoying it. A um, little bulky on the carry, but we'll talk more about that here next couple of weeks after I, I, as soon as I can do a review on that. In the pocket, I got my uh, Marksall Milwaukee Sharpie and my Refine Co. Uh, bolt action stainless steel pen. And then of course, Valley Leatherworks wallet. I uh, hope McGlone is taking a break from uh, making leather. So, uh, if she ever makes a comeback, I will definitely be first in line for a lot of that stuff. So today we have a knife review and the knife review that I want to do is my 30 day knife review of the Pena X series dog leg. Uh, it's left-handed. I couldn't, I can't really deploy it too well on the left hand. So there it is. Um, forgive me. It's a little windy out here in Lubbock, Texas. So, um, so let's talk about the X series dog leg. Um, so why I got it availability, I didn't want to pay secondhand prices and it wasn't up until about two weeks ago that I actually got into Facebook groups where some Facebook groups, you got sellers who are actually just giving you your fair rate. They're not trying to upcharge you or anything like that. So now I'll be trying to keep an eye out on the Facebook groups for the secondary market prices that are a little bit more fair. I'm not going to say that is definitive across the board but it's just a good way to um, gauge the market price and, and people will tell you if, you if you're ripping other people off and that's, that's a good thing in my opinion, that little checks and balances. So anyways, we'll talk ergonomics. Um, I have a small hand and with my small hands, if I choke up on my knife, I still have a little bit of ass hanging out, which is awesome because I love a knife with a dump truck. That's pretty cool. Um, can get you a little closer you can see that there's this uh, uh, recurve right here on the back end um, fits right into my palm but usually I'm carrying it I'm, I'm slicing it like this and this kind of not necessarily pinch grip but this way or I'm cutting it just like this with uh, rope last week was uh, homecoming for Texas Tech uh, we had a bonfire so we had to rope off 200 yards in a, a, a circumference of two no the circumference of the uh, the roping off was 200, and then we have to have we had to have another inner circle, so that way people were 200 feet away from the center of the bonfire. They won't scorch themselves or anything like that. Super cool thing, but I had to cut a lot of rope. I had this. I had my Demco 8025, which is inside right now, but I also towards the end of the week purchased this Spyderco Shaman Shaman uh, Shaman, whatever. Um, and I thought the Spydeco Shaman was going to just destroy everything. And don't get me wrong, this is a really good knife. I didn't put an edge on it. It's still got a factory edge, but I've honed it with my work sharp, um, field sharpener. So anyways, uh, this thing is pretty cool. Uh, 30 day review will be coming on this one, but I thought this was going to be a dog, but it is not a dog. This is the dog, the dog leg. <laughs> so anyways, let's get into, uh, I already talked about the ergonomics. They fit really well for my hand. That's all I can really say about it. I've got the Shaman, which is like made to be an ergonomical knife with the contour G10 and everything like this. But this is a small knife. And I feel like if you have a small hand and you have a small knife, the ergos are gonna be okay. They're gonna be good, um, but they're not gonna be like a Fox Nez, uh, what do they call it? Pilar, Pilar or anything. It's just a good, uh, modern take on a traditional knife is what Pena is going for with his X series with his front flippers and stuff like that. All right, so um, I think 
this milled clip is so handsome um hanging in the pocket you know i've got a pocket knife um and it just looks handsome on the outside the brown micarta is done very well i haven't put anything on it um just my sweat just my leg sweat so very beautiful knife whenever it is uh, uh a little bit more saturated i would say um it comes to a very nice dark color not putting any oil on it i'm just gonna run it raw you know um so it is a bolster lock of course uh, i really really love this knife uh, the action it's on bearings so good you can hear it click there it is oh. and it just every single time my preferred method of deployment is going to be over the finger um, people say it's it's not really made to go straight over like normal front flippers and i can see why the tent isn't there so i have to really use the meaty part of my finger and just get it get into it so anyways deployment is great the carry profile if you can see oh we're not going to be able to get it here let me adjust carry profile on my wranglers is looks like about that like i said the dump truck is hanging out and i love that dump truck just looks handsome uh really doesn't really form fit it doesn't do anything for my hand I, I, I don't get a bigger purchase in the meat of my hand i'd have to carry it sideways like this if i wanted that to work but it's just a overall uh aesthetically appealing s not really an s shape like a sway back but i don't know where i'm going with that um anyways i said it's a bolster lock which i really like when i first got it i would trap myself there's this little uh piece right here I'm used to frame locks, so I would accidentally trap my finger in there and I'd pinch it a little bit and I got a little bit of a callus here um, already from my uh, from flipping it so much. But I've carried this with me for 30 days straight. It has been in my pocket for 30 days. Now, if I come home in the evening, I might switch it out with something else, but it's gone with me to work. It'll go with me to church. It'll go with me to the grocery store. And overall, just really good knife to carry anywhere and everywhere. Um, lighter than my Chavez 229, lighter than my Shaman, not as light as my proper, uh, let's see, I guess I could do a size comparison real quick, we'll see, um, anyways, cutting, on the blade shape you have a hollow grind, I don't know if this is considered the dog leg right here, if the blade shape is considered to be the dog leg, um, but it is awesome. And let me tell you why, because when I was um, working on that homecoming thing, that's why I have these this string right here to, um, let's see, to, I'm looking for the word, I'm missing out on it. Okay, anyways, to simulate the rope that I was cutting, we were cutting three quarter inch rope uh, for the for the T posts and stuff like that. But here's one thing I noticed, compared to my shaman, which is obviously a, uh, what is this, a drop point blade, you know, uh, very a thicker blade stock. Obviously, it's not a hollow grind. It's got a flat grind like uh, the Spider Co's do. You know, it's going to cut rope. It's sharp. It's going to cut rope. No problem. So whenever I'd go and I try to cut the rope, I guess I kind of was trying to fight the uh, the thickness behind the edge, right? I was trying so hard to just like, oh, and then finally it just come flying out. And even then I'd have like a couple of strands of that three quarter inch rope stuck together. That's fine, okay? Uh, I don't mind that. Um, but then, you know, this was in my front pocket and I, I reached for it and I pulled it out and I'd already had it deployed to cut the uh, secondary part of the, to, get, to cut the rope, right? And here's one thing that I really have to show you. I'm just using this as a simulation, but with that three quarter inch rope, it's very thick. So let me show you guys something. I need to talk about this because I just, I had a, an epiphany about it and I thought it was the coolest thing ever because look, so there's a part before the recurve of this blade, which comes to this dog leg shape, I guess. Um, there's a, it's a flat surface. It's a flat surface to about right here. One thing that I noticed is that this belly towards the tip creates a lot of leverage, like a ramp. So now you're traveling on, think of, let's have uh, an illustration. You're traveling on a flat, uh, even surface, and then you progressively go up a hill. There's gonna be a lot more resistance for what is walking 
on the path. So the rope is walking on the path. Now there's a lot more resistance. And as you get closer to the belly, you have a lot more leverage on that fulcrum point. And so it would sort of bury itself right about here. And then it would get through the rest of the rope. No problems, had no hang up. That is also probably a contribution of the uh, thin uh, behind the edge thickness. But other than that, it was so cool and I love it. And I think hands down, this is the perfect knife or the perfect blade shape for cutting tine, cutting rope. Uh, every now and then on Saturdays, I do some landscaping. I'm gonna try it out on some uh, weed eater string, you know, that heavy nylon stuff. I'm gonna see how well it does on that this uh, tomorrow, but we'll see. But anyways, the perfect blade shape for cutting tine. Very beautiful. Let's see, what else can I say about this? You know, we talked about the ergonomics, talked about the blade shape, talked about the in-pocket carry. The price, it's a Pena price, $274. Um, that could be a little off-putting if you're a early collector trying to get into the knife game. I had my uh, Benchmade proper for a very long time, about a year and a half now, and I just carried that one all the time as a secondary. I put it in a little knife slip. I put it in a little knife sheath in the back of my belt. It's just a good knife to have. But this, I made the leap to a, a, a more expensive um, secondary blade, which is what this is. And I don't think I'll ever go a week without putting this in my pocket because it's just so smooth, so beautiful, well made by Rayot. Riot. Um, my centering has been perfect this whole time. I have not had to do any adjusting. The only thing that I've done is like once it gets a little bit of pocket lint, I'll hit it with some air. I don't know if you're supposed to do that or not. I do it anyways. Hit it with a little bit of compressed air inside the pivot area, and then I'll hit it with a little bit of a uh, knife loop. Um, but yeah, I love this thing. Uh, I recommend it. I'm looking for now a thumb stud version of the uh, Pena Knives Mula in the X series variation, obviously. Um, just because I don't think I can really uh, afford a custom yet. But I am looking for a custom. Uh, eventually I'm looking for a uh, what do they call it a Mexican blanket micarta I, I would love something like that um, very fidgety gotta say that once you get used to it. it took me like an hour to actually really get used to it and then play with it with the over the front super fidgety I love it um, Let's see, do I have any more thoughts on it? I think that's going to be it. I love the backspacer. The backspacer looks very handsome. Um, performance, it does very well. Oh, yeah, and so this belly, it's also really great for cutting into cardboard. It's not a Warren Cliff. You know, a Warren Cliff has its own uh, functionalities and stuff like that. But I would have, like, my, um, my drop points and stuff. My drop points. My sheep's foot bench made. Uh, I have a tanto southern grind case knife that i'm borrowing from my brother he asked me to sharpen it and i'm gonna kind of give my opinions on that one maybe a little later but all of those knives i kind of have to whenever i'm choking up on tine or rope or something like that you know i really like i'm, I'm just going to simulate it. i'm not really going to do it i'll do this mo number and then i'll just like put a lot of strength into it and then just slide off and you know that's good or i'll put a little bit too much pressure or uh, not even pressure but just like a jerking motion and don't get me wrong i know how to sharpen my knives my knives are sharp um i just think the blade shape really does something to that rope and like i said with my illustration it's like you're walking on a a flat plane and then you come you start walking uphill and then that's where it just severs the rest of the the rope and i think that's a really good thing so overall, uh, I really love this knife. Um, I haven't taken it apart yet, but I probably will soon just to clean it up a little bit, give it some TLC. But other than that, let's see. I think that's it, gentlemen and ladies, maybe. I don't know. Cool. We're going to call that good, guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate you. Follow me on Instagram at HighWindsEDC. A lot of you might be coming from Instagram, which is totally fine. Um, 
But yeah, keep calm, carry on with purpose. Yeah.